Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at another of the uh, security basics. Today's topic is going to be security authentication failure rate. And this video is actually going to be pretty quick because security authentication failure rate is also known as Cisco shit that does not work. And I'll explain why that is right now. Okay, security authentication failure rate. What this command is going to be is it's going to be a global configuration command that takes a single argument. And that argument is going to be the threshold rate. And if you just read along with me here, the uh, threshold rate is the number of allowable unsuccessful login attempts. Now that's just a verbose way of saying number of failed login attempts. And you can specify this to be anywhere from 2 to 1024. Okay, and it says here the default is 10. That's not true. It really can't be true. Um, let me try and explain. The security authentication failure rate is not enabled by default on the router. So in order to enable this, you have to go ahead and configure security authentication failure rate, and you have to specify a value between 2 and 1024 for that threshold rate argument. You, you can't leave that blank. So technically there could be a default of 10, but it's really never going to come into play. Because when you turn on this feature, you have to specify a threshold rate. Um, so I mean that's, I mean it's splitting hairs, doesn't really matter in the end. If you get this on, you know, your CCNA security exam, then yeah, the default's 10. Don't, don't argue with Cisco if they say it's 10, it's 10. So, you know, maybe commit that to memory even though in the real world it's either not a valid default or it really doesn't fucking matter because you have to specify something. Log. So if we look at our uh, command here, at the end it has log. And a lot of times with commands like this, that's a parameter that you can choose to implement or not implement. In this case, threshold rate's the only argument that you specify. So in order for the command to be complete, you need to have that log at the end. So you don't get a choice of whether you're going to log this or not. And it says here that it's going to generate a syslog uh, message if the rate exceeds the threshold. So I'm assuming that if you configure your threshold rate to 3, that the fourth login would be the one that would generate the log. Now I've never got this damn command to work. Um, we'll get to that a little bit more at the end of this video. But um, reading that, it looks pretty straightforward that it's going to be the one that, you know, the, the authentication attempt that breaks the camel's back is the one that's going to generate the log. Um, but again, I don't know for sure because I didn't get this to work. And this is, unfortunately, this is one of those questions that Cisco likes to put on their, their uh, certification exams. They'll, they'll give you something like Joe Blow logs in with username XYZ three times and fails. Is there a log that's been, a syslog message that's been generated on R1? And um, in this case, I would say no, but uh, that's just from a reading of the log definition versus any real world <laughs> experience with that. This slide actually captures almost all the information that's in the um, documentation for the security authentication failure command. I'll have a link to that documentation in the uh, lesson notes. But the interesting thing is under defaults, if you look down at the bottom here, the default number of failed login attempts before a 15 second delay is 10. Well, you know my position on you know, the default being 10 for the login attempts. But the, the in more interesting part here is that 15 second delay. So we're getting another piece of the puzzle here as far as to what this um, security authentication failure rate command is supposed to do. So basically when you've exceeded your threshold rate, say that you configure three, that fourth failed login attempt, not only is it going to generate a syslog saying that you know there's been four failures, it's also going to implement a 15 second login delay. Now, I again, there's not a lot of detail here, so I don't know what that means. I would assume that what that means is that for 15 seconds, the router's not going to process any logins. And you can see where that can be a problem because uh, the more devious of you out there are probably thinking already, yeah, you know what, I can launch a rudimentary denial of service attack against this um, device. I simply have to have a script or have some monkey at a keyboard 
logging in, you know, attempting to log in with a uh, bad username password combination. And after, you know, the threshold rate is exceeded, the router is going to be locked out for 15 seconds. Not a ton of time, you know, but if you just have something that's running over and over and over and over and over again with uh, login attempts, you could lock this out. The other inter interesting bit is that there's no command to change that 15 second delay. You know, this is the only place where it's actually specified is in that <laughs> default on the uh, documentation page. I have a conspiracy theory as to what's going on with this command, and I'll get to that on the the last slide. And this kind of this kind of uh, fits in with my conspiracy theory. So here we have a um, example of uh, security authentication failure rate. So on R3, we've gone into global configuration mode, and we've specified security authentication failure rate, and we have to set that threshold rate, and we're going to set that to three in this example. Um, and then the question mark here is just going to invoke the Cisco IOS help feature, and it's going to tell us, you know, that we need to type in log because we don't see the um, CR. That means that we can't just hit enter and be done with this command. We actually do have to specify log. But the more important thing here is that this gives us another piece of the puzzle as to what this um, command is supposed to be doing because we were never told what the window was for these failures. You know, we were told that, you know, if you get X amount of failures or X plus one amount of failures within, you know, Y amount of time, it's going to generate a syslog, syslog message as well as uh, implement that weird um, login delay. But here we do get an answer to what that window is, and you can see here that it says a message, log a message if the authentication failures over the last one minute equaled this number. So we find out that that window is 60 seconds, which you know makes sense. Again, we can't change that. We can't change the uh, the login delay value either. The thing that is kind of disappointing here is that now we've got it says um, over the last one minute equaled this number. So now remember my whole little rant about when the syslog message is created. If we go back one slide, we can see that it says syslog authentication failures if the rate exceeds the threshold. Okay, so that means x plus one to me. Well, here it says equals this number. So you've got Cisco IOS help directly contradicting the uh, Cisco documentation out on the website. So yeah, if you get this on the exam, you're kind of boned, <laughs> especially since We've never got this to work in. We can't, you know, use a real life example to figure out what's what. So you've got you got one documentation saying when it exceeds, which would be the X plus one, and one saying when it equals, which is X. So yeah, you're boned. And we can see that the um the full configuration command is security authentication failure rate, then the um authentication rate that we specified plus the log command. The log command, if you hit enter at this point, it's going to give you incomplete command. Uh, we'll, we'll look at this on the CLI in just a minute here. So I've alluded to this a couple times during this lesson. Does this work? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I've, I've not been able to get this to work. Um, I've tried it on a couple different uh, routers running different sets of code. So I, you know, I've got the code in here, 12.3 and 12.4 code. Um, actually, those versions of code I tried in Dynamips, which um, uses virtualized routers, and it did not work. So to be a completist, I actually had a uh, 2811 configured. It didn't work on that with 12.4 code. I also tried the newest um, version 15 uh, code, and it doesn't work. So it, even if it did work, it's kind of an incomplete feature set. You can't change that login delay from the default of 15 seconds. You can't change that window from the default of 60 seconds. You know, it's it's not really as configurable as um, another feature that's actually out there and does work for Cisco routers, and that's the uh, login block feature. So it's good to know this for exam, and maybe you'll find a flavor of iOS or a platform that gets that this does work on. I couldn't, but I wouldn't take that as the authority. If you want to implement something like this in production, what I would suggest is that you check out the uh, login block feature instead. And I have about two hours of videos out there, so if you want to bore yourself to tears, I, I go through the login block feature in detail uh, and that's actually a pretty good feature and it seems to be the login block feature seems to be everything that the uh, security authentication failure rate feature aspires to be 